What is the source of emotion? Okay, well, the source of emotion is the human soul uh, or God's soul, one of the two. Um, there is no other source of emotion in the universe. The uni in, the, in the entire universe, emotion must come from souls. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, and in this we're basically saying that God is the great oversoul, if you like, of yeah. the universe. And there's, so therefore lots of emotion come from God as mm -hmm. well. It's, it comes from the soul, though, in different ways. It comes through the expression of the soul's nature and personality. It comes uh, as well through whatever filters the soul has imposed upon it through its, own, through its experience. So the experience of the soul determines how often the emotion is expressed. Mm -hmm. But, the, but to, for, as a pure answer, the human soul creates all emotion mm -hmm. that is expressed from the human soul. So if I personalise that, every emotion I feel is created by me? Correct. Okay. You can't blame it on somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where this whole concept of, you know, if you get angry and you say, oh, you made me angry. No, I didn't make you angry. Something I did caused something to be filtered inside of your own soul yeah. through some other prior so experience. It, it was received. It was received it, as, in a certain, in in a a certain, certain way. way. Yep. And as a result of some soul-based damage that you've occurred, incurred through your life, you've then decided to express that as anger. Mm. So it's sort of like a responding to stimuli. It, would you, it's not quite as simple as responding. Yeah, it is yeah. oversimplifying it. Because yeah. the reality is you may have done something that the average person would interpret as a violent act. Mm -hmm. But once the soul is completely removed of all unloving emotion, the soul who receives that act doesn't uh, respond violently to the act. No, but the emotion they feel is... is a violent is... emotion, but it doesn't... It's like, so, for example, if you express yourself violently towards me in some way, if I have got some emotional injury, there's a high likelihood I'll either get angry or afraid through your violent expression. Mm -hmm. But if I have no emotional injury and all of my soul is already in harmony with God and with, in harmony with love, I will not respond in fear and I will not respond in anger and I will not respond in addiction. And in fact, it will have barely any, inf any influence at all on my soul. So even if you chose to stab me to death, mm -hmm. it still would not feel any worse in my soul. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes. And this is because the soul that is completely free of all negative emotion yeah. no longer interprets the event as a personal attack upon itself. Yeah. So this is very important to understand. So the soul creates the emotion. It comes from the soul. But if the soul is completely free of any negative emotion, once that emotion that comes from somebody else enters it, it is com it's, it's interpreted completely differently. Mm -hmm. It's interpreted with love, if you mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. So the filter only becomes love, and therefore the result is the soul receiving that what would normally be classified as a terrible emotion uh, doesn't feel terrible as a result of receiving it. Mm. Mm. So we can have emotions that arise from within us. All, all of our emotions arise from within us. Yep, yeah, but we can have some that are negative and some that are positive. Yes. And then we can have some well, that are... Well, remember the negative ones are all about what is stored within us. Okay. So, so this is our filters. So the negative emotions that come out of us all begin because we started to suppress something. And usually it wasn't us that suppressed it. It was usually our environment. Uh, when we were young and undeveloped, our environment told us to suppress it, so we learned suppression. Yep. We learned resistance. Yep. Yep. And so at the soul level, and because we had no intellectual development, our soul just learned that it has to do that. Uh -huh. and, and it felt forced into doing that yep. um, because of living with parents usually who forced it. So it um, becomes a damaged understanding of the will? Correct. Yep. And it becomes a damaged understanding of the emotion yep. as well. Yeah. So now when somebody is enraged with that particular soul, that soul responds either in fear or rage itself mm -hmm. or in addiction, you know, try to pander to the person and calm down the rage. Yeah. A person who is not injured would not do any of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they, they would respond completely differently. Mm -hmm. so, so this is what we need to understand is that the soul creates the emotion 
There is no other creator of the emotion. You can't say somebody else created your emotion. No. The soul creates the emotion, but it's created the, the, the emotion is created through the denied emotion, the filters, if you like. And those filters we learnt to create. We created them ourselves, actually, but they, it was because the environment forced them upon us yes. and we imbibed them mm -hmm. and we didn't have any development to resist that process. Mm -hmm. And that's why the negative emotions or the filters are still within our soul, mm -hmm. determining what we do. Mm. Yeah. So we can have negative emotions or positive emotions as a result of stimuli, mm -hmm. but then we can just have emotions that are always with us, say in the first example that you gave where someone is at one with God or they've let, released an awful lot of negative mm. uh, uh, filters mm -hmm. and then they just have... A pleasant emotion flowing all of the time, mm -hmm. regardless of the stimuli. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Cool. And God has pleasant emotion flowing all the time, regardless of the stimuli. Yeah. So in other words, God doesn't get angry because some person on earth decided to do something, <laughs> you know, against God, as yeah. the saying goes. And God doesn't get upset about those kind of things. God never is angry. God's never wrathful. God's never punishing because God always has lovely emotions flowing from God's soul. Yeah. And God has no emotional injuries. Yeah. And it's yeah. only the emotional injuries that, are, that it cause the blockages within the soul that create the filters that would create negative emotion. Uh -huh. so, so once you haven't got them, of course, then yeah. that doesn't occur. Yeah. So we need to understand that the soul creates the emotion. It's not, it's not our environment that does it. Yeah. And in fact, our soul... Through, through its blocked emotion, attracts the creation of other people's emotion, which is an interesting factor about the soul as well. Do you want to explain that a little bit? Or? Sure. It, uh, if my soul has blocked, uh, if, for example, let's say it, as a childhood experience, I through, went through a certain experience where I blocked fear about spiders, for example, just a very simple blockage of an emotion. And the reason why fear would have been created in that moment was because I might have picked up a spider initially and my mother or father would have gone into some kind of anger or rage or something like that, which is or a fear, or fear yeah. which is a withdrawal of love. Yeah. And in that moment, when love is withdrawn, I've learnt that love gets withdrawn when I pick up a spider. Mm -hmm. In other words, now I become afraid of the spider, yeah. right? Yeah. Because love has been withdrawn, mm -hmm as a result of me picking up this spider. Yep. So it's not the spider I'm really afraid of, mm -hmm. it's, it's the withdrawal of love that occurred that I'm afraid of. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes. So that's now an emotion inside of me. Now, when somebody, when somebody, well, I just see a spider, you know, like get in the car and on the window is a spider. Mm -hmm. My emotion is going to be an emotion of fear, yep. right? And the reason why is I've now got this filter inside of me. And the filter says, whenever you see a spider, you're going to have love withdrawn. Mm. Uh, that's the filter. Mm -hmm. That's the filter you're going to have to feel if you want to get rid of your f fear of spiders. Yeah. But most people don't feel it, of course. We go into terror about it and panic about it. So we see the spider. It's a reminder of the withdrawal of love, right? It, it triggers the, withdrawal, the feeling of the withdrawn love that occurred in our childhood that we that didn't... That was suppressed. That was suppressed yeah. by our family generally, you know. Yeah. And so it was suppressed and so we, it's now locked up within our soul. So now what happens is it determines our reaction to the spider. Yeah. So we panic, we panic, we get out of the car, you know, <laughs> you know we've got all this heart and so forth, just panicking about the spider. But a spider is just a tiny little thing, <laughs> arachnid, you know. The, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, even if it's a big one, like sometimes here in Australia, you get yeah. them the size of a plate or so, but it's still a fairly small compared to yourself, right? Yeah. And yet you're so panicky about the whole thing. Yeah. And, and the reason why is because of this relationship between the withdrawal of love, creation of fear, the, store, the emotion is now stored inside of your soul and it's now filtering every, every response. Mm. And you were explaining to us why you might then attract more of those things. Well, remember that, that God has designed the soul in such a way that everything that it is suppressing or shutting down has to be attracted in order for that feeling to be released. So you will have more spiders in your life yep. as a result. So that's part <laughs> of God's, what you're saying is part of God's design Correct. to actually help us connect with those parts of us that have been suppressed because while they're suppressed, as you mentioned in a previous question, that's affecting our health negatively. Of course. And God wants the opposite of that for us. Correct. So his design laws that would actually bring more spiders into our life 
to help us release, release this fear, fear, which is all about the withdrawal of love yes. that came from our childhood. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's connected to mother or father usually, you know, or somebody who is in a position of responsibility or power over us. And we need to work our way through that emotion. We need to release that emotion. Once that emotion is released, we will no longer be afraid of spiders. Yep. So in other words, we'd be comfortable just like we were as a child, picking up one and looking at it, even if it's poisonous and putting yeah. it down again. And the, ch and the spider won't bite us either mm -hmm. because it's the spider and all insects and other creatures on the planet all respond to fear in terms of attack. So they attack people in fear. Yeah. So, so, so naturally, it's not going to bite us if we're no longer in fear anymore about yeah. it. Yeah. So, so this is the beautiful way in which God's created the soul. We can release everything but we have to go back to its original creation mm -hmm. and, and, and let it go. The stored emotion that was stored there, all locked up, has to come out. And so this is why most people also respond to like a spider in a very childlike way. Yeah. Because usually the, the original cause of the emotion happened during their childhood during, at, at a certain age. And usually for most of them, it was usually before the age of three. You know, you pick up a spider and... You know, mum goes berserk, basically, right? So, so now, or dad goes berserk, yeah, but usually it's mum in this case of a spider. With dad, it might be more like a snake or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But it just depends on what was happening at the time and how afraid they are as well. <laughs> and these are very Australian examples, aren't yes, they? If you yeah. live in Europe, you probably don't encounter snakes or spiders very Maybe much, not, but, but we do yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot here. <laughs> yeah. so, so the fear is the creator of the withdrawal of love. Mm -hmm. And we, love is withdrawn. So now we associate that particular object with the withdrawal of love. And once we've done that association emotionally inside of the soul, that is the filter. Yep. The filter is now present. Now the soul will attract a whole heap of events to trigger that filter. In other, in other words, God is trying to help us to release the filter. God's saying, that's no good in you. It's not helping your life. It's, it's going to harm your life because it's fear. Fear always harms your life somehow. It causes you to control your life in some direction that you don't need to and so God's going no my laws are all going to be now to release that fear yeah. and so your soul being in that state of fear of spiders uh, will now attract more spiders yeah in order to help you release the fear mm -hmm. and that's the conundrum we have and then the more we try to deny that, <laughs> the more afraid we become and the more yeah. attraction there is. Yeah. And it gets to the point where usually we're so, we have so many things happening that it becomes overwhelming. And if we're not careful in that state, we can become even psychotic. See, if we're not allowing ourselves to go back to the original emotion, we're creating more and more suppression. The more mm -hmm. suppression there is, the more chance there is of psychosis. Yeah. The more chance there is of us actually completely avoiding our life. Yes. And this is what, where, what often triggers mental illness. Now, now, the reality is most of us are mentally ill <laughs> on the planet because most of us have a whole heap of suppressions going on and a whole heap of fears going on. It's just what is tolerable from society's perspective is what's defined, defined yes. as the illness. So, so there are certain levels of illness that is all like, that's normal. <laughs> so if she said the average woman... Uh, are you afraid of snakes? And they say, yeah, but isn't that normal? <laughs> and from God's perspective, no, that's a mental illness. <laughs> You've got a mental illness if you're afraid of spiders or snakes or any insect for that matter. Yeah, yeah. If you're afraid of any disease, you've got a mental illness from God's perspective because all diseases are all created by this denial of a flow of emotion inside of you. So all of these things are all, from God's perspective, mental illnesses. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, there's something yeah. wrong, diseased in the way in which you're feeling and thinking. Yeah. And God's trying to help you release that. Yeah. And the more you resist that, the more potential there is of you getting into a state where you completely try to withdraw from your own soul. Yeah. And that's a very, very damaging place. Mm. And that's what causes mental illnesses that cause things like psychosis, where people go out of their mind, as yeah. we often say. Yeah. And the reason why they've done that now is because there are so many fears that they're unwilling to face, so many problems within their soul coming from their childhood experience that they have no willingness to feel the pain of that now they are trying to get away from their life completely and unfortunately that then encourages other people to take over their life, other people being spirits to take over their life. And this is what is a major cause of many people's problems mm -hmm. from a mental illness perspective. But the reality is the majority of us have a mental illness because from God's perspective, there is no reason to be afraid of anything in the universe. And if the average person listed some fears, 
what we, what we find frequently is we list a few fears and then we list a few more and then we re realise that, oh, we've got more than that, more than that. And then we realise, oh, that were all our physical ones. We've also got all these emotional ones and yes. all these sexual ones. and that all these, seem scarier than the physical ones. And they all seem scarier ones. than the physical ones. Yeah. Uh, and then we've also got a long list of fears of, you know, if we can count it a bear on a road or something like that, we are also afraid of them. And then, you know, and then yeah. by the time you add it up, you know, you probably end up with a few, a few hundred, if not a thousand fears, you know. Yeah. And the reality is God says, well, all those are illnesses, uh, mental illnesses. From yep. my perspective, from God's perspective, these things are not anything to be afraid of. But God knows that they're in your soul now. And God created a whole system that allows you to now get to the cause of them and release them. But that system is emotional. Yeah. So it requires you to understand the creation of the emotion and it requires you to understand the potential that you can release the emotion. Yeah. So um, our, our question was about the source of emotion yep. and you, you established that's from the soul. And we've given some examples of how that's the case. Of how that's the case. And mm. really you've started to touch on things like the law of attraction and, and fear and what mental illness really is. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you say that emotion originates in the soul and it's flow, we know it's energy in motion. What happens to it after that? What, how does it then affect um, our bodies? And it, so it flows, doesn't it, from the soul to the spirit and the material bodies? So the, the energy systems, remember our bodies are all energy. Yep. They're all energy in motion, actually. Yep. So you could say, in a way, that the physical body and the spirit body are basically an expression of the soul's emotion. Yes. Because it is energy in motion. Yeah. Um, but the soul, the physical body and spirit body, both energy and motion. So obviously if you suppress a certain energy in your soul, it's bound, and it does, of course, have an effect in your bodies. It's going to shut down certain areas of your bodies. Now when your body is shut down, the organs that surrounding that particular area can no longer function properly. Mm -hmm. So this is going to cause major problems. So yeah. if you've shut down energy around your brain, then there'll be a problem with what happens in your brain and your thinking and your logical capacity to analyse and understand and your understanding of mathematics and science and other things which require some kind of intellectual acknowledgement of those particular things all will be impaired. Mm. Uh, if you shut down towards music for some reason, and many people are because of certain things mum played or dad played in certain emotional moods, that then entered the child and then they realise that, that, that that's not a nice thing to play or that's a great thing to play or whatever. Yeah. And so we're often shut down with regard to music or art and those kind of things. Well, that, that affects certain organs of the body as well and, and so forth and so forth. And, there's, uh, and in fact, as we've spoken about before, in, in the how the human soul functions, if you shut down energy in, in a certain way, of a cert every single flavour, has an effect on a disease, uh, on the accidents and all sorts of things happening to the bodies. Yeah. So, of course, what happens to the bodies is just the effect of what's going on within the soul. Uh -huh. It's not the cause. So you could say emotions originate in the soul. Yep. They flow to the spirit and the physical bodies and the... Uh, and everything that happens in those bodies yep, so is the, the effect. And even the actions of Correct. those The language, bodies, the thoughts, the actions, the expressions. Is all originating with this grand controller, which is the soul, which is the source of all emotion. Correct. And it's all flowing and it's affecting everything. It affects everything. Yep. It affects everything in the universe. Yep. <laughs> Two different degrees. Uh-huh. You know, so if obviously if you do something here and then someone in 25 light years away will struggle to feel it probably. <laughs> And this is the other reason why they struggle to feel it, because the more suppressed in your soul you become, the less other people around you are able to feel the intensity of your emotion, because the reality is you're suppressing the intensity of your emotion. Mm -hmm. And when you suppress the intensity of your emotion, you affect a smaller and smaller area of your environment. And on this earth, it, requ it requires seven billion people to affect something, right? generally, or at least hundreds of millions of people to affect something generally in the environment because of the low amounts of energy that each one has because of the heavy suppression. Mm. So you're also then saying that the less that we suppress, the more that we allow this energy to flow, mm -hmm. the stronger our presence is and the more impact we have. On our environment, mm -hmm. yes. 
And you imagine, of course, if you express these emotions in a positive way, yes. then obviously it has a huge powerful effect upon everyone, not only on earth, but also in the spirit world. Yeah, that's it's a, an exciting and beautiful thought, really, isn't of it? Of course. Yeah. Of course, it's beautiful the way God's created everything. Yeah. And it makes sense. Like God's... A, when I often marvel of how stupid people believe God is. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like they, how, how the perception of the world is that God is stupid. You yes, mean? Yeah. 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 Like people believe God is stupid. Yeah. And no, God is, God is the most intelligent crea- creator. And, and so everything is a marvel to study. Yeah. Once you understand how it works. Yeah. So even the, you know, people constantly comment about on this planet, they constantly comment about disease and you know what God's will is about a person getting d- disease. It's not God's will that you get a disease. No. It's your will that you get a disease. <laughs> like yeah. God created a system that doesn't allow for disease if you do things in harmony with love. Right. So something has to be out of harmony with love in order for you to get a disease. Something's got to be in, out of harmony with this flow of energy inside of your soul in order for you to get a disease. So, you know, God created it that way so that the disease is a reflection that you know something's wrong with your soul. You know something's not flowing. It's a way of give, getting a feedback mm-hmm. to what's going on inside of yourself. And, it's a, and if you think of that alone, it means that God's telling you things every single moment of your day. Every single pain that you experience in the course of a day is a part of this feedback system that God's got operational to help you understand what is the source of all of your emotion. Yeah. Which is, and what's the source of all of your problems? What's the source of all of your disease? What's the source of all of your thoughts? What's the source of all of your feelings? What is the source of everything that's happening to every attracted event is your soul. Yeah. And God's trying to tell you how powerful your soul is through, <laughs> through the expression of God's laws in the universe. Mm. And, and once you understand that, you have the capacity to change it. So it's only when you have... So this is where I see mankind going down the wrong track with regard to, you know, physical illness, for example. Instead of understanding that the soul is the cause of all of these problems, they believe there are physical causes of all of these problems and they're ignoring the soul cause. This means that the soul cause will continue and potentially worsen because of the denial And therefore, the disease, no matter how much it's treated, will become worse, which is actually what we observe happening on this planet with most diseases, with a lot of diseases, particularly those ones that could be said to be life-threatening illnesses and death death results from, that are internal, you know, in terms of what happens in the body. All of them are completely under the control of the soul Mm -hmm. and the soul's responses. So, So... and and on and on the saying also disease so-called diseases that have been cured by medicine are all cured by can also be cured by the soul. So why would you need medicine in the end? You don't. Yeah, and uh, if the soul has this much impact, um, and it's affecting the spiritual and physical bodies, what we do to the physical body in order to repair that is obviously not dealing with the, the, the major course. influence upon both of those bodies. Correct. So we can work with the, the physical body as an effect, if you will. Yes, but, but it, it's pointless, really. Yeah. It's really pointless the exercise of our energy Yeah. because the reality is, although a person who's in total denial of their soul and wants to be feels it's not pointless, of course. You know, the reality is most people would prefer to work on their physical body than actually work on their soul because the soul, working on your soul, is, is sometimes emotionally traumatic. Mm-hmm. So most people prefer to just work on their body, but it's never going to be a permanent solution. That's why we die of old age. You know, even if we don't get sick anymore because we pumped ourselves full of this drug and that drug and this drug and that drug, by the time we get to 70 or 80, we're taking 25 drugs and, uh, and we die anyway. And that's because of what's in the soul. Mm. And, and uh, our inability to focus on the cause and just want to address the effect causes us to have a degradation in further, in further condition. So it's far better to go, right, my soul is my cause of all the emotion and my emotion, the lack of flow of it, is the cause of all of disease. So it's far better off if I focus on my soul and its development in love and its development in the way in which it expresses emotion than it is for me to focus on anything else. And this is where it makes sense for us to focus on our emotional condition. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Mm.